or welcome for the first time. Making a uh, sponge cake today. Now the, this is attempt number two. My first attempt a few weeks ago, I was wet as hell. The um, tin I opened up here, sliced me finger right open and um, claret went everywhere. And anyway, I'm going for it again. I couldn't find two tins, so I tried doing it in one, one cake tin. And um, yeah, burnt the top. Um, it's still all right, cut a bit off and gave it a go. I might chuck a couple of clips in there to show. Worked out not too bad in the end, but I thought I'll try again. Um, I've got another camera now to try and improve a little bit. Lighting's not helped me today. Wind's not helped me, it's been windy all week. Um, so anyway, i get into it. This is a sponge cake from an old school book of mine, um, Cookery the Australian Way. I'm sure we've all heard of it. And it's just basically egg whites, um, flour, sugar, a bit of corn flour or custard powder. And um, yeah, whip it up. I'm gonna try doing camp ovens. I've only got, um, I've got a spun steel and I've got my traditional cast iron and camp oven. Now, it'll be interesting to see how they both go, get the temperatures right, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, but as I say, because I'm doing it with um, two of the tins, um, yeah, I need the two ovens. So yeah, let's try. Anyway, eggs. It's meant to be four eggs. I'm doing five, they're only a little 600 grams. So first of all, we need to separate the eggs. Then we add the egg yolks in later on. So, so I can do this without making too much of a mess. Everyone has their own, own way of separating eggs. Do what works for you. Doesn't matter too much with this one unlike your um, say meringue where you're going to be not wanting any yolk at all because we are adding the yolk back into this at the, at the end but it's just to get the egg whites nice and stiff a cool little hack if you get a bit of um, shell in your in your white is um, simply use the, the shell to, to dig it out. It, um, you can try forever and a day with your fingers, you'll never get it. I'd love to say these are free range eggs from the from your chook yard. Unfortunately the last of our box box um, passed away a few months ago. Um, I'm afraid it might have been a, um, a Mr. Fox that got her. I do, I do enjoy having chooks around. They, um, they're characters of things, especially when we're cutting firewood or splitting firewood, getting in all the bugs and that around you. But, um, but at the end of the day, I don't think you save a lot of money with your own eggs. Um, they're certainly better, but. Um, yeah, you don't you don't do it as a cost-saving issue because yeah, by the time you feed them and look after them, and yeah, they're a bit of work. But anyway, right, so we're going to um, whisk this up until we're getting sort of stiff peaks. I do plan on buying a. Um, cordless mixer. You can, um, yeah, I've seen them at uh, The Good Guys and Harvey Norman. I think that's a great idea. In the caravan, I've got an inverter that I can, um, I've got a little, I think it's a Breville or a Kenwood hand, you know, stand mixer, or hand mixer, I should say, that um, I just plug in and I've got whisking attachments and whatnot on it, and that works really good. But um, yeah, I just think, yeah. Part of my plan with these cooking apps 
is try and do things you know as off grid as possible. So you know I'll do me cooking with the camp ovens, um, the Weber. Um, yeah, so yeah, coals, gas, um, things that you do when you're camping or you know not near a power source. I know these days there's a lot more options with power sources. We've um, you know, got lithium and you know, it's, it's endless what you can do. You can run in, I mean, you can run air cons and that now, so um, but I say it's a bit more of a back to basics. And um, yeah, sometimes it's good to just yeah. Or I can go off grid and just yeah. you know, make things with, you know, with your hands. You know, when you're away camping, this is the time to do these sorts of things. Fills in a bit of time. Some people enjoy it, some people don't. I do. I I love cooking. That's part of these uh, YouTube videos for me is to actually. You know, it's for the kids to look back on Monday when I'm not around. I can um, leave them something to look at, you know, see what I was about, what I enjoyed doing. Um, most of all, you know, the actual cooking side of things. Something they can, I was going to write them up like a dad's cookbook. And I thought to myself, well, why not actually, you know, you know just catalogue it, in, you know, in, in video form. Obviously, this would be a lot easier with the um, kitchen aid in the house, but yeah. What's the fun in that? So we're just going to go here till we get stiff peaks. Worth noting too, with the um, these hand mixes, you need to have yourself a, a fairly heavy base bowl. So you're not trying to hang onto the bowl while you're doing it. Just gonna keep adding a little bit of sugar, a little bit at a time, keep whisking it up. Not ideally when you're using a stand mixer, you can just leave it singing away and just keep on gradually adding a bit of sugar as you go. So from here we need to start adding our egg yolks. So we'll um, just incorporate the egg yolks. That's pretty good. Right, so what I'll do now, I'm just going to sift in the flour, the custard powder, or corn flour. I'm using custard powder because I couldn't find any corn flour. And a teaspoon of um, bicarb. careful when you're opening these things. This, like the old Milo tins, it had that bit of aluminium seal in the, in the, under the lid. Stupid me, I pushed down in there and I went like that. And yeah, I sliced right open, so don't recommend it. So, I think I said bicarb, baking powder, sorry. Yeah, so, um, teaspoon of that. We just want to run it through a sieve. We can see a little crap in there. Right, 
I'll actually run it. Now what I'll do, need to um, gently incorporate this into the into the mix. Now use a metal spoon, or in this case, a metal spork. Um, and you just want to incorporate it. You don't want to mix it too much because you don't want to lose all that air out of your any mix. So what I'll do is I might actually run it back through here, just give it a second sieve. I'm just going to Put a little bit in first, and I'll just gently so it's just lightly incorporated. You don't want to beat the crap out of it. Now I'm sure there's um, a lot of a lot of cooks out there, a lot of people who do a lot better job than me at this. Guaranteed, I'm at no no means an expert. I'm not an expert in anything, to tell you the truth. But um, I just enjoy doing it. Hence why I'm doing this. But I always figure you're better off to give it a crack. You know, have a go at doing something, and you'll improve. You know, hopefully. Right, so I'm going to chuck half a mix in each of these. I've um, already greased these. I've got some baking paper in the bottom. Makes them a bit easier to get out. And um, yeah, just try and evenly distribute between the two. Now I've had my camp ovens sitting over the fire preheating for a bit. Maybe not quite even half and half. That's all right. They're getting stacked on top of each other once they're cooked anyway. So in the camp ovens, I've, I've got a trivet inside. Just gets the base off the um, bottom of the camp oven. So hopefully you don't burn the base. Um, So we are aiming for about 100 and 190. So I'll get a bit of, bit of heat on top. Now the spun steel, obviously they um, they don't retain the heat as good as they. Um, all right so we got Whoa. second 
pretty good. Well, let's see how the cast is going. Oh. Well, I'm happy with that. So that was about, well, I'd say 18 minutes. Like they've been sitting for about five minutes. So we'll just run this around the outside. Hence why it's yeah, baking paper in the bottom. A little bit of cooking spray. In theory, this should just pop straight out. It's lovely. All right. And you'll notice it has come away from the the sides a little bit too, as it's shrunk. Sort of, yeah. Once you bring it out of the oven, get a few minutes. Here we come. Ah, look at that. And they are as light as a feather. Actually cooked to perfection. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so I'm going to do a basic. Um, filling so whip up some cream a um, bit of jam and I'll do a like a passion fruit icing to go on top of it just to top it off so we'll um, do the cream first Doing it all like this by hand. You don't feel as guilty about eating a bit because you've had a bit of a workout actually making the stuff to start with. Ah. That's one way to look at it anyway. As you can see that's starting to pick it up nicely now. See if you got yourself a bit of a sweet tooth, by all means. You can add to that, you know, a bit of vanilla essence, or um, you know, chuck a little bit of um, caster sugar in there as well when you're, you know, whipping it up. But honestly, you don't need it. It's um, bloody, as I say, I'm adding jam to it, and as you know, jam's bloody mainly sugar anyway. And um, I'm going to do an icing on the top as well. Once again, sugar. Careful with knives. Well, that is that is as light a sponge that I've made. I'm very happy with that. So I'm gonna need a bit of jam. I'm sure I've got some to spare. I'll be generous with it because, well. Because I can. Right. So, oh, it took me bloody, it took me spatulas and crap back inside. The wind keeps blowing everything on the ground, so. A 
the bloody cream still in here. You do it? Right? What are you doing? I'll place this on top. I'm pretty chuffed for that. Okay, so let's make up a bit of an icing. So I probably, I won't need to add too much liquid to this. Um, icing because because of the passion fruit so what I'll do is I'll add I'll add me um, icing sugar in that first I'll just see how it blends up the passion fruit and the raspberry well I'll say the raspberry the raspberry jam's not really going to cut through much of the sweetness but the passion fruit oh look passion fruit's awesome it'll cut through the um, the sweetness a little bit and um what have we got here? I'll just, I'll guesstimate how much I'm putting in. We'll go for about a, about a cup. Ish. And I'll just bring it together. I'll just see how it, I just wanted to have just a slight runny consistency. I ain't gonna get with the passion fruit, I don't reckon. So, so from here I'll just add a dash of milk. Just a little bit of the time. You really won't need much. Might add a little bit more sugar. I think I've made it a little bit too runny now. And so you don't need much to change it. Yeah, so that's starting to come together now. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to pour that over the top. I'll just bring it around the side of it so it starts to just try and get that bit of a dribble over the edge. All fancy like. Now I've done it before with the, the tin passion fruit lacks a bit of flavor um, quite runny as well and tastes freaking awesome right. nice and messy down the sides but when you chuck that across onto a serving plate it won't matter but I tell you what I reckon if you serve that up out at a campsite or oh, anywhere out in the bush. I reckon everyone come from miles around. And for me, that's actually one of the better ones that I've made. I'm pretty stoked with that. This is my lovely wife Tracy, long suffering wife. Been together what 50 years? Yeah. Feels like it, yeah. <laughs> He's my best mate. Waiting for a bit of food himself. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'll do that. Thanks, Mum. What's your verdict on the sponge beer? Yeah, you happy with that? What do you reckon, Bandit? Bandit? You like it? Mm, what's more? Hey, success! very much for tuning in and please leave comments down below anything you'd like to see or you know, watch me cook if you could hit the subscribe and the like button well look that'd be 
even better. Keep an eye out for the socials. I'll be launching them soon enough. And um, I'll see you all on the other side. And thanks once again. Cheers.